Here's our first look at the Nextech Compact V300 CNC milling machine. This machine is designed to process one part at a time as opposed to a full sheet. It's simple to operate, comes standard with the barcode reader. And if we come over here and look on the left side here, we're, we'll see where the reference pin is and some of the grippers and clamps that are used as it grabs this piece. Inside, it's going to be a lot like our heavy-duty, full-size CNC router. It's got a large 12-horsepower HSD automatic tool-changing spindle with four tools to choose from, a large drill head with nine vertical drills, six horizontal drills, and a saw blade attachment as well. See right here, we've even included a wrench stand for tightening those ISO 30 tool holders. And then, if we can pan up a little bit, take a look at this heavy duty gantry. That's the same style, all steel, heavy duty gantry construction, high speed helical rack and pinion. This thing is approaching 2,000 inches a minute travel. So, again, it's very fast, very accurate, and super, super heavy. Now we're going to take a closer look at the Next Tech V300 vertical milling machine. So typically when you run a part, it's going to be off of a barcode the machine comes equipped with. And it can be running from Cabinet Vision or Microvellum, KCDW, one of the cabinet design softwares. I don't have one on me today, so we're just going to design and program a part using the onboard software that the machine comes with. It's pretty basic. You're not going to be running any kitchens through this. But it is great to have something in case you want to make a one-off part, something custom without having to go back to your cabinet design software. So it's pretty simple. First, we're just going to hit this button and we're going to define our workpiece. This is our part that we're putting into the machine. It's just got a simple X and Y and a thickness over here. It also remembers the last thing you did. So if the part's the same, you can just hit OK. You don't have to measure anything. It's going to pop up a little design area. That's our workpiece. And now I can just create some tool paths. It's got some really neat built-in macros for drilling, routing, pocketing, and we even have a saw on this machine. So I'm just gonna start with some drilling. And again, macros in every window to choose from. And then you're just filling in some of those numbers to give you exactly what you want and where you want those pieces to be. So if you're happy with the X, Y position, how many holes you want in each row, the distance between the two and the distance from the edge, the distance between holes, in this case is 32 millimeters. Although I don't have a bunch of the same size drills, I kind of have a large variety of diameters. So we are going to be drilling one at a time today in this example. But you can set your drills up however you'd like with as many of the same number of uh, diameter drills as you want. And then we also have the tool diameter. Right now I'm going to do 8 millimeter, so that's 0.315. You're happy with those settings just click OK. It'll ask you for the final drill depth. You can type in whatever you'd like there. For this example I'm just doing 0.3 and it throws up those drills right up on your screen there. Next I'm going to go in here and I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to create a vertical hole and a horizontal hole that match and this is going to include those holes from the side of the panel. So those are just the settings here that we have to deal with. On the vertical hole, we're going to be using a large diameter uh, hole there. And we also have the depth and then the position in X and Y. For the horizontal hole, that's kind of a fixed because I'm just going to have that programmed as half the thickness of the panel so that that hole goes right into the center on the side of that panel in the same location that I'm putting my vertical hole. Let me go ahead and click OK when I'm done with that. And it pops in. You can see the vertical holes here. A little bit harder to see the uh, horizontal holes unless we change our view with one of these buttons up here. So now I've got all the holes that I want. I'll just do a simple uh, route. And lots of options and again lots of macros uh, for pocketing or routing. I'm just going to do a single line instead of a shape. And you can choose the length. Do six inches. Click OK. So one of the last things that's just going to ask us which tool we want to use for that cut. We have a four position automatic tool changer in here. And so I can choose half inch, quarter inch, three eighths, three sixteenths, or whatever tools I happen to have loaded. Today I'll just choose the quarter inch. Again, final depth, whatever I want to choose there, and then click OK. 
and throws my route in there. You'll see my route happens to be centered over the first tool. I guess I chose the same exact XY location. I could choose to delete that and start over, or we could just run it the way it is. If I want to delete that, I just simply delete that. It's gone. And go back in. And this time, let me move that up to six inches. And now that's no longer interfering with my holes. And once I have all the toolpaths created and how I want them oriented, I just simply hit the NC button to create the code. I'm going to give this a file name of test 777. And all the code's been created, that's done. If there was a error or a conflict with where my clamp's gonna be and something that I had put onto the panel, it would give me that error message now and then I can adjust or edit the part as needed. But I've, I'm in the clear, everything looks good to go. And we'll go ahead and run this panel now. Keep in mind, this is not a time study. It's not meant to be a time study. Uh, what we're doing here is just showing you how the machine works. Um, but just as a example, this, this part is gonna take 42 seconds. I just ran it. But if we look at our tools, we have a variety of drills available. But when I tooled up this machine recently, I put different diameters in every single spot so I could have a really large variety of diameter sizes. If I was in a production mode and I was doing a lot of five millimeter or eight millimeter uh, shelf holes, for example, then I could line up all these and all these with the same size diameter. Those are all 32 millimeters apart. So the machine would automatically drop down uh, six in that axis and four in this axis all at the same time. That would make drilling that much faster. For example, I'm doing all these one at a time, again, because I've only have one eight millimeter bit in each axis. So what that means is, instead of a 42 second runtime for this part, I could probably get that down to 25, maybe 30 seconds if I used a uh, whole bank of drills on that. I also am doing uh, two drills on the uh, horizontal side. Uh, the large drills here and a little slot down the middle. So we're just going to run this right now and give you a chance to see what this looks like. We've loaded up our file, it's test 777. And to run this part, it's really simple. All we do is slide this over. I'm going to try to film this the best I can. And you just slide it right up against that little pin. That's our reference pin. Once that's there, we're just going to hit the program start button right here on the machine. And then it's going to go ahead and move that clamp into place, clamp that part down, and start going. We're going to hit the start button now. It brings in that panel. It's got a top clamp. It's got side clamps when it's necessary and when the part is hanging in that area. Right now it's using the clamps on the right side. And it's just moving that part along, drilling all those holes. We're already into the large diameter holes along the side, and all those vertical holes are already done. At this point, now we're just starting up the spindle. We're going to cut that little quarter inch slot. That's finished. The only thing left is the drilling of the holes all, and that part's done. So, end to end, about 40 seconds, as you can see. So I'll pull that part out. And that's done. The machine now references itself back. It's ready to go. If I was doing a lot of the same part, I'd go right up against the pin of my next part, hit program start, and the machine's ready to go again. Again, this has been our first look at the Nextech V300 Compact CNC milling machine. If you like this video, please subscribe and we'll bring more videos to you. If you would like a quote or more information on this machine, please don't hesitate to reach out. Shoot us an email or give us a call. We'd be happy to help. Thanks again.